For there we go to WrestleMania 5. I'm hoping that this is not going to be on a lot of people's lists, but um, WrestleMania 5, um, I'm sorry, number 5, WrestleMania 8. Um, this is Roddy Piper against Bret Hart. Um, this is a really, really good match. And I've always said that I've always drifted towards watching Bret Hart as I was a kid. And I didn't really understand why guys like Kerry Von Erich, uh, Mr. Perfect, and Bret Hart really stood out to me, even though they weren't wrestling for the WWE Championship. I was always into these guys as real wrestlers, real technical wrestling, um, the way it was supposed to be done. Um, Brett versus Piper was sort of, sort of built as the new school versus the old school. Roddy Piper sort of brought up this thing that uh, the Piper family and the Hart family were one and the same, and they were ancient cousins um, that you could trace back to a, a certain cousin marrying another cousin or something like that, and um, the two uh, were together. I'm not sure if um, Stu Hart had any hand in Roddy Piper getting trained or anything like that, but they really made it seem like these were two families um, that were you know, going to be going out there and doing battle. Uh, and one of the things I remember more about this match more than anything else is during um, the uh, backstage segments where they're being interviewed before the match. One of the things they don't really do for WrestleManias anymore is the uh, pre-fight and the post-fight interviews with the guys in the back. Uh, with Mean Gene and Sean Mooney, Todd Pettengill and things like that, is that basically um, Brett makes it look like he was at a sucker punch Piper at the end. And he pulls back and he says, I would have got you. And that's when Piper pulls his fist out of his, uh, his tights and basically he already has it ripped, uh, it, it all wrapped up. And he was looking for a fight right there. Um, Brett and Piper went out there. Um, they did everything that they could do. Um, Brett, I think, gets colored during this match. Um, and he ends up, you know, winning the Intercontinental Championship. Brett, of course, had won the title uh, at SummerSlam 1991. And then I believe around the time of the Royal Rumble, ended up losing the match to the Mountie, I believe, at a house show. Um, and then Piper ended up winning uh, the title from the Mountie just days um, days after. Um, and that's what set up Brett versus Piper. On the Piper um, DVD um, that came out years ago, uh, Roddy Piper says that one of the only championships he ever won during his wrestling career was the Intercontinental title uh, for Vince McMahon and WWF. And that was sort of something that Vince asked Piper to come back and have this match. And Piper, you know, sort of said he had to ask for it. And Vince gave it to him. He wanted to have that sort of crowning moment uh, of winning a championship. And they weren't going to make him WWF champion. Uh, so Intercontinental title was as good as it gets. And uh, Piper is a guy that really doesn't need titles. Uh, to define himself, whether if you want to link him in to Dan Marino or Charles Barkley, um, just sort of, you know, great players in their sports that never were able to win the championship that some people sort of make jokes about him for. But, you know, they, these are really good quarterbacks uh, as well as basketball players that deserve to be in that uh, conversation of being the best of all time.